Threats from the Middle East are changing the politics of Europe. This Thursday, right-wing nationalist parties are expected to do well in EU elections. Their support is largely driven by voters weary of mass immigration. The European Union says the migration crisis is over, with dwindling numbers of new arrivals. But as special correspondent Malcolm Brabant reports, on the Greek island of Samos, the crisis is far from over. Perhaps it's worse than ever. Welcome to what they call the jungle. The uninitiated might think that after four years, this frontline island would by now have the infrastructure to cope with the influx, especially as the European Union has given Greece over one and a half billion dollars. But according to refugee support groups, the squalor is worse than ever. How are you doing? It's too bad. He's sleeping on tents, uh, snakes, uh, a wolf, what animal? Every night come here and shouting, it's too bad. Iyad Jabril from Gaza landed six months ago and says he's been told it could take two years for his asylum application to be heard. He fears this shack will be an open prison cell for the duration. I think the picture is more clear than uh, anything, anything can I say. Uh, you have, we have bad condition here, no doctors, no good food, no bathroom. Uh, we can't sleep very well. The place here is not for a human. The animal, it's run away from this place. No good. Samus, no good. Foot, no good. Police, no good. Four years after the European migration crisis began, people are still coming across these waters in their flimsy boats, despite the poor conditions in the Greek islands and the fact that most of them will not be able to leave Greece. And people are still dying out there. While we've been here, a boat carrying three Afghan families capsized. The Turkish Coast Guard say they recovered the bodies of five children and four women. Two other people are presumed to have drowned. Como sava? Savabia. Como te tabel? Jumabel Amjad. Karim Eshtewi fled Gaza to escape the Hamas administration. Bonjour. Bonjour. Means good morning. He's learning French, but has little chance of reaching France because Greece's frontiers have remained sealed to asylum seekers for over three years. We came here to serve the countries which will save us. Samos's burden is disproportionate to its size due to its geography and because Greece's northern land border is closed to migrants. The island and its 33,000 inhabitants are just five miles from the Turkish coast. The official camp run by the state is supposed to accommodate 700, but as many as 4,000 live behind and outside the barbed wire above Samos's main town, Vathi. There are 40 nationalities here, most are African. Bogdan Andre runs a group called Samos Volunteers. People that are, are saying that the, intentionally the conditions are kept like this, so it's a deterrent for new people to arrive, which is cruel, it's inhumane. How can you say that we are going to keep people living in squalor, in, in, in inhumane conditions, just to deter other people from coming? Miltiades Klapas heads the Migration Ministry, which is responsible for allocating the EU's $1.5 billion handout in refugee aid. Where has that money gone? A big part of this money went to the construction of facilities, approximately 34 in total, including the reception and identification centers across Greece. Do you think it's acceptable, four years into the crisis, for those people who are arriving in Samos to be living in those conditions. Everyone who criticizes today the not so good conditions in some of the facilities forget that Europe today does not contribute to resolving this issue. A day center run by the volunteers offers temporary respite for asylum seekers who are bored, frustrated and angry at being trapped on the island. Some Greek, they treat, they treat you bad. I'm sorry to say you are Greek, like we see because we are black. Some even close their nose when they see you come, you know. It's very bad. At the day centre, women escape the pressure cooker of the jungle. There are almost as many migrants in the camp as there are Greek residents in the main town. Volunteers praise the people of Samos for their generosity. 
But spokeswoman Agos Olivieri, a former political advisor in Argentina, warns that the islanders' mood is changing. They're tired, they're frustrated, they've been left alone by their government just as much as the government has left, has left alone the refugees. So in a way, the tensions are growing and the tensions are, are, are getting quite high. It's the migrant children who are in the front line. Poor living conditions in the jungle are being used by some Greek parents to try to stop migrant children going to school. They've erected banners telling them to stay away. They fear disease and that some may be violent because of the trauma they've endured. Sonia Paskalaki is the parents' representative. Once the living conditions improve, once proper accommodation is provided for these people, dignified, humane accommodation, then we'll be happy for them to come to school, to learn and become educated. With echoes of the 1950s integration battles in the Deep South, a handful of migrant children turned up for class. Freshly scrubbed, smartly dressed, enthusiastic. Most of the Greek children had left for the day. Speaking on their family's behalf is Majida Ali, a Syrian granted asylum in Greece who stayed on Samos to help her fellow refugees. 100% it is really important for them because they start building their future and without education they cannot continue this building. But teacher Marco Peccioni believes some form of segregation is necessary. There are structure, existing structures where they could, uh, where they could be taught. In, in a separate way, because definitely the, the level, <laughs> you can't teach, let's say, someone who does not know Greek uh, the same way you teach someone who knows Greek, definitely, is it not? So what do we finish by teaching, sign, sign language or just doing drawing in uh, the last uh, class of uh, primary school? If, if the goal is to reduce the level in general of education, there, there's no better way to do it. Across the continent, far-right parties are expected to prosper during May's election for the European Parliament. Yanis Lagos is one of several lawmakers from Golden Dawn who's on trial on charges of belonging to a criminal organization that conducted attacks on immigrants. Despite accusations against what prosecutors allege is a neo-Nazi party, Lagos says support is growing. We've seen that the European Union's insolvent policy for the last 40 years has demolished Europe's values and principles. They want to turn us, Europe, into a different continent. They want to Islamicize us, whether we want it or not. But fortunately, the Europeans do not want this anymore. If the far right increases its influence across Europe this month, what will become of refugees like Majida Ali? Unlike many victims from the Middle East and beyond, She's been willing to say publicly that she was raped after being arrested in Syria. She was held in the notorious Sednaya prison near Damascus, compared by former inmates to a Nazi death camp. The first time when they arrested me, the military, and they take me with the family. The family, it was a mother with three children and one boy, he was 12, 13 years old and they raped the mother in front of her child, the boy. And then because the child tried to protect his mom from the rape, and then they shot the boy in front of his mom. Majida could have left the darkness of Samos, but believes she has a duty to stay and help. The authorities are planning another camp in Samos. Islanders are angry that their once idyllic vacation destination may soon have two permanent ghettos. Samos is bracing itself for another summer of overcrowded rubber boats. Here, the migration crisis is never ending. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant in Samos.